Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making a recipe for pine bark cookies. Pine bark cookies meaning the bark of a pine tree. Now, this recipe was made possible by lovely Anna, who sent me pine bark flour, also known as petu, all the way from Finland. Anna, thank you so much for sending this to me. It's precious, precious stuff. It is very difficult to harvest and make and it's just very labor intensive so Anna thank you so much for sending this to me if you've missed my previous video where I use petu or the pine bark flour in my petu lepa which I make the traditional type of petu bread or pine bark bread be sure to check it out absolutely fascinating use of this material to make bread to extend flour in Finland, that type of bread is also known as famine bread. It was a way to extend regular wheat by using pine flour. Although when I was researching this recipe, I read on the Nordic Food Lab that in the Sami culture, which are the people that are indigenous to Scandinavia, this type of flour or pine bark flour was actually representative of good times, of wealth. So the recipe I'm gonna be using today for pine bark cookies was also found from the Nordic Food Lab. I'll put the link down below to the original recipe in case you're interested. In a large bowl, we're gonna need 112 grams of room temperature butter, and this is basically a stick of butter. I have pounded it out, which is my favorite way of bringing butter to room temperature when you've got a stick of cold butter. <laughs> and if you wanna see me demonstrate how I got the butter to the state, I will refer you to my water pie video. Link again, down in the description. Right there, nice and soft, 75 grams of sugar. Low speed. Now we're supposed to add one egg white. I'm just going to grab the yolk, which is my favorite way of separating my eggs. Make sure your hands are clean, okay? Gonna set this aside, but don't throw this away. Just add this to your scrambled eggs in the morning, right? Because we don't want this to go to waste. It says to lightly beaten the egg whites, so we'll do that. Add that to that. Meat. So yeah, when I had the petulepa or the pine bark bread, it had a noticeable sour flavor to it. Now, I initially thought that this was probably from the sourdough, which was used to leaven the bread. I'm interested to see if this will have any kind of tanginess to it. The bread also had, not surprisingly, a piney flavor. I'm curious to see how that turns out in a sweet version, but let's find out. All right, continue. Now we're gonna sift in our dry ingredients. I've got my fencing mask handy my favorite way of sifting. In case you're curious, I've never fenced before, but I would really like to try. Maybe I can make that happen. I would love to on guard. Okay. Is that even in fencing or is that? Okay. Yes. Showing our ignorance. All right, let's continue. <laughs> now we're adding 60 grams of petu or the pine bark flour. Now this is really, really light. So this looks like a lot, but by weight, that is 60 grams. That's why I really like using grams when it comes to baking because volume measure is not nearly as accurate as weight. Now this is 90 grams of wheat flour. By volume, much less, but by weight, more. Love that. Two grams of baking powder and two grams of salt. And just sift that in there. Now I've watched videos on processing petu or the pine bark flour and making it. It is so labor intensive. So I guess what the Sami did was they would take vertical strips of the inner phloem or the inner bark of the pine tree and they would take at most one third of the circumference of the tree, otherwise it would kill the tree. They would strip the inner bark and then dry it and then grind it into a powder. But Taking strips would allow the tree to continue living, which is great because then you're not killing a tree and you're also harvesting it. I found that really, really interesting. Those are wood chips that are left in my sieve. Awesome. Now we're going to just incorporate this on low. So now I'm gonna use a spatula and kind of combine this together so I can form it into a dough. Turning this out onto a piece of plastic wrap. 
So this looks really dry. It does not look like a dough at all, but I suspect upon compression, this is going to form a perfect dough because it is quite sticky when I use my hands. I think there's definitely enough moisture in here. And now we're supposed to refrigerate this for one hour. It's the Doodaloo Take Care Buy shirt. Get one for yourself, get one for your loved one. It's only offered for the next couple of weeks, so get it while you can. All right, back to our regular programming. Here is my pine bark dough. It was in the fridge for an hour. Now we're going to roll it out so we can cut out some cookies. Now before I put it in the fridge, it was a bit dry and crumbly hoping with that little bit of rust that things have you know together but we might have a little rude awakening here let's just find out shall we i'm supposed to roll this out between two sheets of parchment paper i'm gonna do half at a time Ooh, it definitely feels like a dough it smells a little piney buttery So the recipe didn't really say how thin to roll this out, but based on what the picture looked like, it was pretty thin. Maybe an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna roll this out just like I do a pie crust. I like to do it from the middle out. It says to cut these out using your circle cookie cutters, and look, I found my set. <gasps> I could not for the life of me find these when my brother was here and we were making donuts. I could not but I found them, yay! I'm gonna be using this size. This is about a two inch diameter cookie cutter. I'll cut as many as I can out of here, trying to avoid the cracks. Then we're gonna place the cookie circles on a Silpat lined baking sheet. All right, now I'm gonna pop these into the freezer and chill them for five minutes, and then I'm gonna pop them into a hot oven, 180 degrees C or 156 degrees F. Five minutes again, and then we shall have pine bar cookies. So my pine bark cookies are done. I took them out of the oven and they've been cooling here on my countertop and it smells great. So it's buttery and slightly sawdusty, but not unpleasant at all. They look beautiful and just like shortbread cookies, they don't spread much. They kind of just stay the same. And we're not looking for a lot of golden color here. We just want the cookies to set and be solid. This size cookie it took about nine minutes and it said in the recipe that depending on the size of cookie you end up cutting, it may take longer than five minutes or less than five minutes. Can't wait to taste one. So when you smell them, they smell like sawdust and butter. They smell really nice actually. All right, let's give them a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Hmm. So definitely the right amount of sugar in there. The first thing I taste is the sugar and then I taste the petu or the pine bark flavor and it's kind of sawdusty and bitter. There is a distinct bitterness to this. Absolutely. And then towards the end you get a buttery flavor. And the texture is quite unique as well. While it is soft and cookie-like, it's definitely more coarse. More like if you have like a hobnob or a digestive biscuit, if you've had those kind of biscuits before, kind of like that, which I believe are made with whole wheat flour, which this recipe includes. It's just kind of coarser in your mouth. You've got that texture in there. And then of course, you've got the pine bark flour. I wouldn't say they're exactly delicious because they're so bitter. Mm -hmm. I was hoping the inclusion of butter and sugar would make this an enjoyable cookie, but I don't think I would make these again. Mm -hmm. mm. And because it tastes like sawdust and it kind of feels like sawdust in your mouth, that's all I kind of can imagine is that I'm eating a sawdust cookie, which essentially I am. <laughs> So big thanks again to Anna for procuring the Petu for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know down in the comments below if there are any recipes you'd like me to test out or try, or if you've ever had anything made with pine bark before, I wanna know about it. Share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.
Oh, and if you're interested in beekeeping videos, be sure to check out my other channel where I show you my adventures in beekeeping. Yes, I have three beehives in my backyard. All right, toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>